Hi, I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Too Deep. Azazel is often described as a fallen angel turned demon lord who received one of the goats on the Day of Atonement. Let's read that portion of scripture and investigate these claims. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 7 through 10. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of Medan. And Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for Azazel. And Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord and use it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for Azazel shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away into the wilderness to Azazel. The Day of Atonement was the only time of the year that the high priest was allowed or commanded to go into the Holy of Holies to make atonement for the people of Israel. The high priest was to take two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of Medan. Then the high priest would cast lots to determine which goat was chosen for which task or which ceremony. One to be sacrificed as a sin offering and the other to be sent away alive into the wilderness to Azazel. Now this word Azazel is only mentioned four times in three different verses in one chapter in the entire Bible. It's mentioned in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 8 once, Leviticus chapter 16 verse 10 twice, and Leviticus chapter 16 verse 26 one time. Although this word is only mentioned these four times, there is much debate over its meaning, since its meaning is obscure with very little information. But what we do know is it is a proper noun. It is masculine and it is singular and absolute. Therefore, since it is a proper noun, we know for sure then that it is either the name of a person or a place. Many scholars argue that it is the same name of a desert demon or a goat god or even Satan himself. So let us unpack that thought for a moment. To start, let us revisit the command concerning Azazel. The law said that on the Day of Atonement, they were to select two goats, one for the Lord in the form of a sin offering. That goat would be sacrificed first. Then the other goat, whose lot fell for Azazel, would be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it by the laying on of both hands by the high priest, thus transferring the sins of the people to the live goat. Then the live goat was sent out into the wilderness to Azazel. So what about Azazel being some sort of a goat demon? Well, if indeed Azazel is a desert demon or a goat god or even Satan himself, then that would mean that one of these would be included in the most sacred and most solemn of all the Moedi, the appointed feasts of the Lord. Let me ask you this question. Why would an angel that sinned by corrupting all of mankind creating the Nephilim and rebelling against God now be given a sacrifice on arguably the most holy of the appointed feasts of the Lord. No! The Lord would never include a fallen angel that is supposed to be chained up under the gloomy darkness until the last judgment to receive a sin offering on his behalf. That is just not how punishment works. The angels that sinned in Genesis 6 are in chains of gloomy darkness awaiting the last judgment. They are not and have never been a part of God's salvation plan. This erroneous belief comes from the blasphemous book of Enoch that not only directly contradicts scripture, but leads many astray to believe Jesus came to redeem Mount Hermon and not his people from sin. This book of lies has no place in the church and should not be used for any type of guidance in interpreting the word of God. Now, if it's not a fallen angel from Genesis 6, 
then is it a kind of goat demon? Think about that question and the implications thereof for a second. That would mean that the Lord God included a demon sacrifice in the ceremony that represented the cleansing of Israel from their sin and their iniquity. Just the thought of that is like nails on a chalkboard. Nah, that's not right. It simply does not compute because nowhere in scripture do we ever read or ever see a time or a command that included demon worship. Instead, we see numerous times where God commanded his people not to sacrifice the demons or even have their names upon their lips, such as in Exodus chapter 34, verse 14 through 17. It says, Do not worship any other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land, for when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them, they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices. And when you choose some of their daughters as wives for your sons, and those daughters prostitute themselves to their gods, they will lead your sons to do the same. Do not make any idols. Now. Look at these other two passages found in Exodus chapter 23, verse 13. And then we're going to go right on to Hosea chapter 2, verse 17. But first, Exodus chapter 23, verse 13. Pay attention to all that I have said to you and make no mention of the names of other gods, nor let it be heard on your lips. Hosea chapter 2, verse 17. For I will remove the names of the Baals from her mouth and they shall be remembered by name no more. God did not even want the names of false gods in their mouth nor on their lips. Therefore, we must conclude that he did not now include a demon god in salvation ceremony. Otherwise, Almighty God would be talking out of both sides of his mouth, so to speak. And we know for certain God never ever does that. He says what he means, and he means what he says. What about Satan then? Can Azazel be another name for Satan? Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 and 10 tells us that Satan has six names. They are the great dragon, the ancient serpent, the devil, Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, and the accuser of the brethren. Azazel isn't a name of Satan. Satan's job was to test mankind, not to receive sacrifices. There is never a single time in scripture that we are told to sacrifice anything to Satan. For more on the purpose of Satan and who he is, check out our video, Who is Satan? Which is under our Too Deep category. If God used any other person or being in the redeeming of Israel, then God would have to have used another in the salvation of the whole world. Why? Because the law is but a shadow of the good things to come. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Now, if it's a shadow of the good things to come, then God would have to have used one of them in the removing of the sins of the whole world when he gave us the free gift of salvation. If he did, it would make God a liar, for he says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10 and 11, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no other God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And again, he says in Hosea chapter 13, verse 4, But I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me. And besides me, there is no, what? Savior. Therefore, no other being could have been a part of the salvation of Israel or the entire world. That leaves only one option. Azazel must then be the name of a place. So, why did one lot go to Azazel? 
because Azazel represents a place away from the presence of God. The goat sent to Azazel had to bear the iniquity of the sins of all of Israel upon it after the first goat was sacrificed before the Lord and atonement made for the people. Leviticus chapter 16 verse 20 through 22 says, And when he has made an end of atonement for the holy place and the tent of Medan and the altar, he shall present the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquity of the people of Israel and all their transgressions, all their sins. And he shall put them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is in readiness. The goat shall bear all their iniquities on itself to a remote place and he shall let the goat go free in the wilderness. The goat for Azazel had to take all the sins of Israel away into the wilderness. Therefore, Azazel represents a place without the presence of God. How can we be sure? The reason that the goat bearing the sins of Israel had to go into the wilderness to Azazel is because it had to leave the presence of God because there cannot be sin in the presence of God. When Cain sinned by killing his brother, Abel, he had to leave the presence of God and go to the land of Nod. Genesis chapter 4, verse 10 through 16. And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who found him should attack him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Because of Cain's sin, he had to leave the presence of God and make his home elsewhere. Look at what the psalmist says about the Lord. Psalms 5 verse 4. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. David, a man after God's own heart, tells us that evil may not dwell with God. Therefore, the sins of the people of Israel had to be taken away to a place where the presence of the Lord was not. That place God called Azazel. According to certain scholars, Azazel is a word meaning abstract place or state of being. Some believe Azazel comes from a Hebrew word meaning depart or remove and thus interpret it as utter removal, complete sending away or solitude. Therefore, Azazel is not a person but a place, a full an utter and complete removal from the place it now is to a completely different place of solitude away from the presence of God. But for now, let us summarize all of this for you. On the day of atonement, the high priest would select two goats, one for a sin offering and the other for a live offering sent to Azazel with the sins of the nation of Israel on its head. Now, the argument put forth by some that Azazel represents a desert demon or some goat god or even Satan himself is false because Almighty God would never include demonic, satanic, or angelic sacrifices in the cleansing of mankind from our sins. Because if he did so, it would be like worshiping them because they would be included in purchasing salvation for us and God would never let that happen. God was strictly against any type of demon or false God worship, for He alone is God, and it is He alone who saves and redeems His people. Therefore, we can understand that Azazel is not a person or a thing, but rather Azazel is a place.
So if you liked this video, please hit the like button and then share it with friends. Also, if you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell, you will be ensured to never miss one of our posts whenever we upload a new video. If you want to grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website, holdahope.org, or join our Telegram channel, Hold a Hope. We also have a quiz channel that you can have some fun while testing your Bible knowledge skills with our Bible quiz. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Too Deep. Until next time, be blessed and stay blessed.